Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome to another Pride and Grit Spa Spotlight. I am super excited about today's interview because I've been wanting to do this one for a very long time. So um, I suspect many of you already know my guest today, but I am uh, one, very excited to introduce you if you haven't met her to Brittany Rocker. Um, and very excited to talk about the, um, the project that she has and what she's doing to help the military spouse community because I've been a fangirl over here for quite a while. So, Brittany, thank you for hanging out with me today and for talking through what you're up to. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to get to chat with you. Absolutely. So for, for folks who maybe don't know your story, go ahead and kind of give us the highlight reel of, you know, what, what they should know. I'm going to do a quick run through. So I actually, um, so I became a military spouse 14 years ago um, after meeting my now husband in an airport um, and exchanging business cards, flying out of state to go on our first date because he was in uh, Mississippi and I was in Texas. And then six months later, getting married at a courthouse and three weeks later, him going on his first deployment. So, you know, Sounds a lot of military like military. Yep. Um, so that was 14 years ago. And um, I will be brutally honest, the first seven years of military spouse life were brutal for me. And I made it brutal for mm. my spouse, because I just could not see the positive in military life. I, I didn't feel like I fit in. I struggled with um, employment and underemployment. Mm -hmm. And it just, I had a really hard time connecting. And then um, I finally woke up after about seven years and said, Hey, you've been doing the same thing the same way at every installation. Maybe we should try something different. So um, I did, I, I decided I was going to, after seven years, I was going to attend my very first um, uh, welcome at an installation, like go to the, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. You like welcome course um, through the installation. And so I did and took a tour of the base and became more comfortable with being on the base. Cause I'll be honest. I was like, I was nervous to drive around certain mm -hmm. areas. I'm like, am I supposed to be here? Am I going to get in trouble for being here? Um, <laughs> so I became comfortable with all that became more comfortable with rank structure and understanding that and knowing uniforms, like, cause I just did no. not put I mean, effort into that. Yeah. There's um, nothing intuitive about it. <laughs> I know it's just it's so much. So that was the first seven years, and then the past seven years, I've really changed and embraced the life, and just embraced everything about it. Found all the possibilities and all of the opportunities in the life um, of, of living military life. And um, then you fast forward to 2017, and um, I was nominated for the Military Spouse of the Year award. And to my surprise, I, I really had zero <laughs> inclination. I mean, all the way to being in DC at the event where they were going to announce. And I was just rooting for uh, <laughs> somebody <my> else. <laughs> you know, I, I really in my head, I, I, and I'll be honest, in my head, I was thinking, Cassandra, who was for army, I was like, she's going to be it. And it's going to be perfect. And I mean, when they called my name, I was so shocked. I was just like, okay, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> Um, but I, I took that opportunity. So in 2017, I was awarded armed forces entrance military spouse of the year. And I started the year really thinking that I was going to use it as an opportunity to advocate for military families with special needs. So the exceptional family member program. And I thought that's where I needed to be because at the time I had a two year old who had down syndrome and a lot of other health issues. And I said, okay, this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And um, after a couple of months, I realized as much as I love that community and I advocate for them because my son has special needs. It's not where my heart was. I was mm. not fully in it. The passion piece was not being like filled. And what I found myself doing was, being like doing so much in that world that I was absent from being present with my child, if that makes sense. So oh, interesting. I was doing a lot to advocate for him, but because I was doing so much advocating, I wasn't present in like the moment with my, yeah. my so huh. I realized that very quickly and changed course. Right. So I started um, noticing after talking to military spouses, you know, through, the award program, being able to travel, I talked to military spouses. And the more that I talked to, the more I realized that there was an, a, um, an issue with identity. Mm -hmm. and it 
me, I had an, an issue with identity. It was officer spouses. It was enlisted spouses. It didn't matter. It was, it was like every military spouse I would meet was living for military life, mm-hmm. living for the next deployment, for the next TY, for the next PCS, for the change in um, work hours or right. schedule. And I said, okay, here, this is something that I'm passionate about. Like mm-hmm. I want to see military spouses living for what they're passionate about and with purpose and keeping into consideration military life is different and challenging, but to say, you know what? Yeah, I'm a military spouse and I live this life and I also live with passion and purpose and not say I'm not doing what I want because of the military. Right. And so that's where I found my niche and I'm passionate about it. And, and, and it's kind of history from there. Like it's just been that same and, and, growing and continuing to grow. Um, well, and I'll, you know, it's interesting because I, because if I think back to the interviews that I've done so far, I don't know exactly how many that would be, but maybe 15, 16, uh, maybe a little bit more, but, um, identity is one of the, one of the questions I always ask is, you know, what is your, um, you know, what's the biggest hardship and what's the biggest blessing of, you know, of your time. And, identity comes up again and again and again, um, either something someone personally struggle with or just something they observe their peers to struggle with. Um, mm-hmm. And I think you're right. It is this, it's almost like this time warp where it can kind of keep us from moving forward and it can keep us from really fully embracing what each place and people may have to offer um, and how we can grow because we're sort of, you know, stuck in waiting on that next thing, that mm-hmm. next PCS, the next duty station, the next whatever. Um, and not necessarily investing that time in, in what we need and, and figuring out what works for us. Um, but I think there's also, it seems like there's also been this um, kind of not evolution of sorts, right? Where I think there's, there is a lot more discussion openly about the fact that this, that identity is a, is a challenge. And I think the more we talk about the fact that it's a challenge, the better equipped we're all going to be to help each other and ourselves kind of like move in a better direction and start to, to get the tools to not feel like we don't have that. And to feel like we actually do have this full life. That's not, you know, waiting on the next gate. So tell us a little bit about the the program that you have and that you created as part of this. So after it took me about a year and I really, I took notes. I journaled my whole year as the um, AFI MSOI and I, took notes of um, conversations with military spouses. And then I, I started really trying to group together different concerns mm-hmm. in the um, spectrum. And I said, you know, there's nothing. We all know there's per- personality profiles. There's all this information out there um, for you to do kind of like self care and, and recognize right. things about identity and, and purpose and what you want to do. And so um, my thing was that, about it that's like earth shattering everything in there is stuff we already know it's stuff that we don't hear often we don't get asked often well what do you enjoy what are your hobbies right. you know we don't hear those things nobody asks us those things and so we don't really sit and think about it we don't we don't look visually at our day and take a good look at it and say this is what my typical day is and Um, of this day, there's nothing on there that I'm doing for myself. And there's nothing on there that I'm doing that I'm passionate about. If we don't do it and take that time. Yeah. Do you think some of that is, is somewhat sort of op tempo driven in that, you know, I feel like there was this period in time where I think I definitely didn't have time to sort of take stock and invest in myself and, you know, and do all of those things because I was sort of surviving, you know, for us, it was, you know, one year and then, not quite a year off and then another year. And, you know, in the meanwhile, right, you're still training. So it's still not a year off, you know, so we had these periods in time where I feel like a lot of us were just sort of hanging on. Um, and, and maybe, you know, maybe that is part of why we just sort of never developed that ability to, to stop and go, oh, wait a minute, you know, what am I beyond the, you know, the mill spouse? What am I beyond the parent? You know, who am I as the individual? But now because we have a, you know, overall a lower op tempo and we you know we do have a little bit more time as a family perhaps there's a little more time for us to kind of do that do you see that shift from like your 15 years as well yes I do see this shift and and really 
I do see the shift, but I also recognize with myself that um, I was filling my time with so much. Mm. So filling my time with family obligations, filling my time with what I considered military life and spouse obligations, filling my time with volunteer opportunities and advocacy work and so much that I got to a point where I was like, I found myself saying I was too busy to go to the gym, right? which is something I needed to do for my own health and well-being and wellness, right. but I was too busy to do that. And when I looked at the, when I wrote it out to visualize, mm-hmm. I was president of the spouses club, key spouse, um, president of the booster club for my spouse's um, squadron. I was leading a nonprofit that I had built. And so all of those leadership roles and doing that, I was actually telling myself, you can't go and take care of yourself. Because these because things I are more important. All of these things. Yeah. And so it took, it took going through a self inventory and asking myself the questions mm. uh, to be able to realize and visualize. I, I find that most people are visual. Mm-hmm. So when you kind of write something down and they see it and they're like, oh, oh, like I really need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it's like hard to fight with that, right? Like if, it, if when you see it, right, it's not in your head and it's on paper and you're looking at it, like you can't argue with the truth when it's staring you in the face. <laughs> yeah. And so in the workbook that I created, it's just um, exercises to do. And it starts with that. You write down a typical day and, and then you go through that and there's a, an exercise associated with it that says, what can you minimize and maximize out of your day to achieve whatever it may be? So in the book, it says to achieve purpose, but in the live workshops, I tell spouses, you can put anything there. Do you want to achieve more balance? Do you want to achieve less stress? Do whatever it is that you are trying to achieve right now, change that word out. Right. And then say, what do I need to minimize? And what do I need to maximize to achieve this? And oftentimes that's the thing is we just, we don't even take the time for ourselves to address those issues. And that's when you'll see burnout. That's where you'll see Mm -hmm. overextended, you're overreaching. Um, You might see deterioration in health, Mm -hmm. um, you know, or marriages or relationships. Yeah. Uh, So, so many things happen. So the workbook is uh, like I said, it's not anything, earth chattering. I tell spouses that right up front. I said, we're just going to finally ask, you're going to have the time to ask yourself the questions that nobody's been asking you mm. and you haven't even been focusing on yourself. So it's, it's a, it's a touch on that. It's a touch on what are things that you enjoy? What are you naturally good at? What mm-hmm. dream do you have? And really focusing more on the why to your answers right. instead of answers themselves, because as military spouses, we do have mountains in front of us, which are real challenges that we can't control, like not knowing when you're going to move, where you're going to move, how long you're going to be there. Those are out of our control. Um, and so those are real mountains and those are real challenges in military life. However, we have the um, ability to be able to take that challenge and make it an opportunity. We're the only person that can do that. But in order to do that, you got to recognize what's in front of you, kind of accept it, and then (laughs) figure out your solution to it. And I tell people all the time for, you know, military spouses, we have so many organizations with um, resources and services for us. But if you don't know what you need, Mm -hmm. how do you know what to go look for? Well, and yeah, and even if you do know what you need, it's still hard to know (laughs) where to go look for it. Point. So it's like, but, man, yeah. if I don't know what I need, and it's already hard to find stuff as right. it is, but if I don't know what I need, I'm really There's, at a disadvantage. Yeah, this yeah. Point. Like, no, I need sure. to at least figure out what I need so then I know the direction to look and be able to move forward. So that's really the whole premise of discovering your spark. And it's, and it's not so much like you're not going to have every day like passion and purpose built. That's <laughs> Okay. And I tell people that all the time. But, and so whenever we do the workshop, I'm not, I'm not helping military spouses achieve that. I'm helping them just 
figure out what is something just for you that you want to do and that you want to work on. And it doesn't have to be this grandiose is like, mm-hmm. I'm going to create this business or I'm going to create this nonprofit or whatever. It can literally be, I really enjoy reading and I haven't found myself reading in the last year. Mm-hmm. How do I mm-hmm. create it? In the right. life? What are what I can do it? And so maybe it's going to look different for you because maybe you're a mother of preschoolers right now. Right. And so you don't have a lot of time. So it's trying to figure out a way to do something you enjoy in the circumstances you're living. So, you know, an example would be put your headphones in and instead of being able to read, have an audible book and mm-hmm. being able to do it during laundry and during dishes and while you're cleaning the bathtub and <laughs> maybe when you're in the grocery store walking around or you're in the car pickup line. So it's helping military spouses just navigate that and figure out a way to incorporate it into mm-hmm. their life you know, and, and to, and to start making choices that are not for the military. Like Mm, I come across spouses who are like, I'm not going to go for this job because we're supposed to move in a year. Well, you might not move in a year. Right. You you are are such hard choices though. And so it's like, if that company gets you for six months or six years, be an asset to that company Mm -hmm. for six months or six years. And and take what you experience there onto your next duty location. But don't, the, the whole premise is just don't allow this lifestyle to stop you from pursuing something that you want to do. Yeah. Like if there's something you really want to do, we have a lot of tools and resources to help us achieve that. Um, and so that's really the end result. Whatever that, if you want to tap dance, let's figure it out. We're going to figure out for you to tap, you know? <laughs> And so that that's the whole premise. And just to bring that back to military spouses. Do you find that, that when folks have come to like the live workshops, do you find that most people who come already know they have sort of a blind spot where identity is concerned or are, are there some that come like, Oh, I don't know what this is. And, and they're sort of floored by the fact that they do and that that's sort of been this thing they were looking for. So I would say, the first thing in live presentations, I ask people, are you in a state of discovering? Mm. So you, you, you're not really sure. You're Maybe you're waking up and you're like, here we go. Another day, same thing kind of thing. Are, are you trying to discover something? Are you trying to ignite? So there's people who are like, I kind of know what I want right. to do. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to get started. And then we have the people who are in like the sustain category. So they're like doing what they love. They're in it, you know, not daily, but like in their life, they're doing what they love. And it's how do we keep that right. when a life moment's going to happen, when a PCS is going to come, when a deployment's going to come. So mm-hmm. how do we, we keep that? And so that's kind of the three spots. And I would say um, a good 60% of people that come to the workshop are in the discover phase. Okay. Um, I'd say another... 25 are in the ignite stage um, and, and 15 are in the sustain. Right. Very few are in the sustain. Which I um, guess makes sense. Yeah. Stage. And, um, and the reason that, that I think the ignite stage is so many, it's, it's just, it, it is that simple statement is that they are literally living for military, for what the military life is. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I have a very common thread in our conversations is a military spouse will come into the workshop and say, you know, it's driving me crazy. My spouse never comes home at the same time and sometimes working 10 hours or 12 hours. And so, you know, I'm, I find myself cooking dinner at eight or I find myself right. cooking dinner at nine and the kids are hungry. And, and I tell them all I preference and I say, I'm not a counselor. Right. I can't give you advice, but I'm going to tell you what I do and what finally <laughs> Which is- happened because that was an issue in my house. Yep. I said, at six o'clock right. and if you're at home at home. And if you're not in the microwave yep. and that's it <laughs> because I needed the continuity. The kids needed the continuity. Yes. I want us to all be around the table. It's not feasible mm. to, wait. you know, we need that structure. We need that schedule you know, my spouse knows what time dinner is. And if he can get home, he's going to be there. And if he can't, he's not going to be there. And we're not going to wait till nine o'clock. Right. Yeah. Because then what are you doing? You've got hangry kids. You've got no. spouse who's starting to 
get resentful because you're just like, when are they coming home? Yeah. Well, and I think it's it. part of it is like, I think in all situations, being able to look at all of the costs, right? Because I think it's easy to see, oh, well, there's this cost of us not having dinner as a family. Absolutely. Yep. But there's also Absolutely. this cost, like you said, of, of resentment. And there's this cost of, you know, behavior, behavior with really, you know, tired and hungry kids. And, and there's a cost of you not having time if you're the, you know, the parent at home to be able to like relax and recharge or whatever you need. So there, you know, it's really, I think sometimes it's being able to like hear it differently and see all the costs that are occurring. Um, yep. Sometimes I, and I'm, I'm guilty of that too. You're like, you focus on this one cost that seems so important without acknowledging yep. all the others around it. Yeah. Cause then you're like, you know, bath schedules are off, bedtimes off. Uh, you know, time for adults. Like if your kids normally go to bed at eight 30, but dinner didn't get on the table till eight 30. Now they're in bed later and the adult to adult interaction and conversation for the day, it's not mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. you know? and so you're right. It's addressing all of the other costs. And I tell people all the time, what are you willing to sacrifice to gain? Sure. Sure. And what I'm willing to is going to be different than what you are, which is why I never say, hey, do this mm -hmm. because it doesn't work for everybody. Right. But I say this is what worked for me yeah. and my family right. because I did. And so the sacrifice was we're not going to have dinner together every night because the gain is I have structure, I have schedule, I have kids who are you mm -hmm. know maintaining. It's less headache for everybody. And so that one sacrifice resulted in better gains for our family. Right. And, and so it's addressing those types of, of things. Yeah. In the, workshop. in the, in the live workshop. And then, in the live and, and so obviously right now I know you're not doing those, but generally do you have like, are there a certain number of those you wanted to, you had wanted to do this year or like, is there a schedule for that or how would folks yes. know if they wanted to find out like when the next live one might be? So currently the live workshops, I have partnered with the USO. So the USO powers the live workshops um, that we do around the country. And typically we were doing four per month. Oh, wow. So like one tour, I would get on the road okay. and do four locations right. in like a three to four day period. And then I'd come back home. Right. And, um, and that's, that kind of works because one of the things I've committed to um, for my family is how, what am I willing? This is that sacrifice mm -hmm. and gain. What sacrifice to be away from my family in order to gain? Sure. And so mine is uh, no more than three nights mm -hmm. away from my family um, is what I will do. So that's my commitment in my workshops is that I will travel for three nights, four days per month, and that's it. And so um, I will I will cram in as many as I can do <laughs> in that time frame. Um, you know, sometimes it's only three because I might be flying mm -hmm. from multiple locations in that time frame. Like literally there's times where I get up in the morning, I do a workshop, I head straight to the airport, fly to the next location, get there at 11, 12 o'clock at night, wake up early in the, the morning, next... do a workshop and do the same thing. Yeah. It's exhausting, mm -hmm. but it provides me, if I'm going to be gone from my family, I'm going to, I'm going to make every minute count sure. that I'm gone and really try to impact as many military spouses and families that I can. Right. So, uh, but this year we just, um, with the USO in um, March, we started doing um, virtual webinars. Oh. They're the same three hour workshop. They are more challenging because there's no face. Right. I can't see everybody watching. Um, so everything's done in a chat box. So I'll watch what's in the chat box and I repeat things and we have the conversation and it has still gone well mm -hmm. and we're still having a lot of participation. Um, but it's not like the ideal. Yeah, no, I mean, there's nothing, nothing like being in person. Yes. So the goal is to get back on the road as soon as we can, um, continue to do web-based, especially for our overseas. Mm hmm houses because that's going to even be harder to do live oh, yeah. in person overseas. So continuing to do that to ensure we're providing them an avenue. Um, and then we're exploring a digital um, support program. So it's basically um, three minute videos that have already been produced mm -hmm. and it follow up support to the workshop. So 
when you get into the workshop and you're starting to work on this workbook, it can feel overwhelming Mm -hmm. because you're like tackling what's happened in the past, what's going on right now and where I want to be in the future. Right. Uh, And so I developed a, a 12 week support program where it's a video that I've already recorded with specific journal prompts to help continue on that growth pattern. So it's not just like, Oh, I had this workshop. Now it's like, okay, we're going to go into a week after the workshop and here's some questions to focus on this week. And the goal is not for you to journal every day. It's to literally dedicate like 10 minutes a week. Oh, okay. Journaling. And, and so, because the reality is nobody has the time. Right. I mean, I don't have the time every day, but once a week I can commit yeah, I mean, that's, to coffee, right. sitting down and answering some questions because the questions alone are allowing me to like, explore areas that I probably haven't been giving attention to that I need to. And I always like to compare it to, you know, why do we get an oil change in our car? Why do we do that every 3000, 5,000, 10,000 miles on your car? Because you want your car to keep functioning and working and you don't want it to break down on you on the side of the road. And it's a a big financial investment. You put all this money into a car, you know, Mm -hmm well, why are we not treating our bodies as a vehicle? And why are we not addressing the needs of our vehicle ourselves? And so I tell people all the time in the workshop when they leave, I said, if you leave with nothing else, (laughs) everyone go and think about getting your oil changed in your car, you're going to think I need to check in on myself. I need to go grab this workbook, address some of these questions and see where I'm at. And because oftentimes you don't know when you get into a rut and how long you're in that rut, unless you can go back and look at something that says, this is where I was. Mm-hmm. Where go. Yeah. Look at where I'm at now. No, I have, I'm always fascinated to go back and read, you know, things that I've thought and places, you know, where I've been and, and, you know, just sort of mentally where I've been at, at various points over this journey. And it's always really, I, I don't know. It's always very eye opening to understand whether you, you know, whether you're in a better spot or, you know, whether you're not. And sometimes without yeah. a baseline, you don't know. You don't know what to compare it to. So the work workbook's a baseline, really. Mm-hmm. That's what it's, it's a baseline to see where you're at. And it's a, a hope that you will continue to, to take that little bit of time for yourself and just address the questions that nobody's asking. I mean, right. I tell military spouses, Typically for us, we're in two categories. We're in a a carried category, meaning we need to be carried by others. We're in a season Mm -hmm. where we support and to be carried, or we're in a category where we can carry others. Mm. What happens though, is we tend to get in the carry other category Mm -hmm. and don't recognize when when we need to be carried. And so we're like, yes, we'll do meal training. And yes, we'll watch your kids. And yes, we will. (laughs) you know, volunteer for this. And, you know, and we do that and we will carry others and be there. But then we have a really hard time mm-hmm. recognizing just, Hey, I do. I need to be carried right now. Yeah. Yes. I will train. I, yes. No, you know, it's really, different. yeah, that's so true. And just an interesting way. It's in some ways an incredibly simple way, right. To think of it is, is if you sort of put yourself in those two categories on any given day, any given week, um, you know, where are you and are you doing the things that support that? You know, are you asking for the help if you're in that, you know, I have girlfriends that I can text and be like, I need to be carried today. I need to be carried. <laughs> and they're like, what do you need? What, what do you, I'm going to order you. I'm going to order dinner. It's going to be delivered at your house. You know, right. just because we're always so on for everybody. Yeah. Think about that as a military. So you're just always yeah. on. And you're like ready for, for whatever's coming and you're, you're or, like, or we're not. And that's equally not fun. Or we're not. I, I mean, I feel like we're always in that state, but that doesn't mean that we have all the resources right. and tools to be yeah. prepared for it. Yeah. We're, we're not always like, prepared to be in that state, but yeah. yes, you're absolutely right. We're always sort of, we're always there whether, whether we're ready or not. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so yeah. So the workbook, like it's just, it's not anything earth shattering. It's just really taking that little bit of time, being honest with ourselves and saying, yeah, that, you know, I've been doing this for too long. You know, I've been doing for everybody else for, for too long and I deserve to do something for me. And like I said, I'm not saying every day, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day, but it's, 
you know, if you're, you know, somebody who I, I had one, um, a military spouse who wanted to be a photographer really bad. She loved photography. She was passionate about it. And I was like, do you have a camera? And she's like, no, I don't have a camera. And I'm like, okay, so we got to get you a camera right. because Let's, <laughs> like yeah. to be able to do this. And, um, and she was like, well, you know, we don't have the money to invest in a camera. And I said, do you have $20 to invest in yourself every month? And she just looked at me and I said, $20, that's McDonald's for your kids. Right. You coffee, know? whatever. Okay. Yeah. You know, or coffee, Starbucks, whatever. And, um, and she was like, yeah, I said, you're valuable. You're worth $20, put $20 a month in an envelope. Don't take your kids to McDonald's mm -hmm. at one time. Eventually you're going to open the envelope and there's going to be enough money to go buy a camera. Right. In the envelope, you know, but for her, it was more of that. Like she didn't even see the value of investing $20 a month in herself. Right. In that envelope. And so it was getting to that, like, realization and now she's got the camera this was like a couple of years ago I started working with her she's got a camera now and in the interim I was like hey while you don't have a camera see if you can find a photographer that would let you shadow mm -hmm. so you is this something I want to do as a profession or a hobby right if I do it as a profession what do I want to do do I want to do families or children or weddings or you know you can do things in the interim to like benefit and help you in what you're trying to discover. Yeah. And so, um, it's just that kind of stuff, you know? It's well, and I, I was just thinking about too, I, and I don't know, you can tell me, but I would guess that the other really wonderful thing about getting people in a room is that ability to connect with someone who is in a similar place, right. And, at, and is at a similar point, um, you know, in their journey and maybe is struggling with their identity in, in a similar way. And you can, you know, develop these friendships that are based on keeping each other accountable to the fact yes. that, that this is, you know, these, this is something we want to invest in and we're going to help each other invest in it. Um, so I'm, I would imagine there's some really neat friendships that have come out of those sessions, um, either are, deepened or created from, you know, from that time together. It's interesting because in the workshop, sometimes you'll see friends that come together. Mm -hmm. So they like, committed to come to the workshop together, which is great. But then you'll see people who just come independently mm -hmm. and when they leave and through the workshop, it's like, oh, you like this. And oh, this person said that. Well, OK, now y'all can connect like, you mm -hmm. know, and there's you can see the connections made. You can see the ones who um, leave and they've exchanged numbers. And the fun thing has been there's a couple of locations I've gone back to oh. more often and they come back <laughs> again and they're like, I'm coming back again because. <laughs> The first time I learned this and now right. like I'm ready yeah. to do it again. Um, so and so fun. it's been neat. And they've come back with like the people they've met, like, <laughs> you know, like friend, and they're now friends. So it's developing that relationship and network mm -hmm. and um, helping them get engaged. And because we do like this is done with the USO right now, it also allows them to learn about additional programs that are available, mm -hmm. whether in person at a USO center or that's like a, um, uh, virtual right. because USF yeah, are virtual sense. programming to kind of meet everybody where they are. So it's been great to see that resource and everybody in the room, when we start talking about things, you'll have spouses chime in and be like, Oh yeah, you need to go here. Like this right. exists or oh, this exists. So it's just this three hours of like information dump, you know, well, of it's just, just community building. I mean, you know, that's that's the part that I love about that whole model is it just creates community in places where you wouldn't have it otherwise, because sometimes we kind of end up siloed either in our neighborhood or siloed in our unit. And so uh -huh. this ability to kind of cross other boundaries and, and, you know, meet people that maybe we wouldn't have interacted with just because we just didn't, you know, we didn't have that opportunity to sit in a room with them and learn about them um, kind of changes the community and broadens it, which I think is really cool. So. The one thing in the workshop that we never discuss, though, when you come into the workshop, the first thing we do is I ask you, tell me one positive thing about where you're planted in life. Yeah, I want to know one good thing. We never discuss our spouse's jobs, mm. their rank. Awesome. That's never something that comes up for a reason. Yeah. Because yeah. it doesn't matter. Right. Like we want right. to just learn from each other and experience from each other and develop relationships. And my workbook, you know, um, if you look at the back of the workbook, um, the concept is mine, but my, uh, 
designer is the military spouse who's an officer spouse. And I'm an enlisted spouse. And we manage to make our friendship and relationship work. Oh, yeah. To say, yeah, we're not going to go and barbecue together because your husband's a base commander. And, you know, you know that. You, you, right. you get that. But I don't have to do that to be your friend. Yeah, right. I can be your friend. Over coffee. And and, yeah. And over coffee. Yeah. And so, um, you know, so it's great because it's a great example on the back of the book, which is why we don't get into that. Mm -hmm. Like that is not the important piece. No, that's good. Um, There. So that's that's just something I wanted to share. Yeah, no, no. I'm glad you did. So tell me um, what I was thinking about. So the the online is an um, an option right now. Eventually Mm -hmm. we'll be in person again. And then is there sort of this, is there sort of like a self-paced option or is it really through one of these other two venues? So the, the goal is the, the digital series that was created to support the workshop. Okay. We're, we're looking at having that as a self-paced option. Okay. So, So um, you would get the video every week. So let's say we opened up registration and said, Every three months, there was going to be rolling registration and we'd get spouses enrolled. You would get an email every week. It would have a video, three minute video, and it would have the questions and you would just at your own pace. Right. And and they're quick because the whole thing might be 15 minutes of questions and a video, which a lot of people don't have more than 15 minutes a week. So do that. And then it's like a continuous um, check in. So for 12 weeks, you're self paced and growing with this you know, program. And then at the end, I would get on with everybody on like a zoom call or whatnot and just say, okay, we like, how did it go? Right. Where's, you know, what'd you learn? Where, <laughs> was the beginning? where were you kind of at the end? And we'll have a survey that goes with it. So a survey to say like, where are you at at the beginning? And then a survey after the 12 weeks, like, where are you? Where do you feel like you are now? That's awesome. Yeah. I'm so, excited for when that comes out. I, I want that to happen because, you know, well, one, there are not USO centers everywhere. Sure. So it's hard um, to me. Some people are not comfortable going in person. They would rather do this at home. Right. Independent personality styles. Totally get it. Um, and so I want there to be the opportunity to meet every spouse where they are. Right. You where you are. And um, who knows? Maybe you go through it and you do it self-paced. And then you say, man, I want to go to a live. I, I want to go and connect with other, you know, spouses. Yeah. Um, and then you can look. Yeah. So the USO has a USO military spouse program page. Um, that's where all of my events are listed right now. They're in the works of developing a new website where I'll have like a landing oh, great. page information um, where we'll have, you know, registration links and information um, as we move forward. But unfortunately right now we're just kind of in this holding yeah, pattern. I, I mean, I yeah. get it. It's, so we're, we'll see where it all goes. No. So um, I'll, we'll wrap up here in a second, but I wanted to, to ask you the one question I usually ask, which I realized I forgot to, because we talked about the hardest thing, which I, I would guess for you would be identity. Um, mm-hmm. But what would you say is kind of your favorite thing as you look back through all the years about the military life? You know, um, the, the favorite thing is the relationships that I've built throughout, um, you know, I didn't take advantage of Mm -hmm. those in the beginning, but you know, when I look right now, if if there's something that happens in my life that I want to share with somebody nine out of 10 times, I'm sharing that with a military spouse. Who's not a blood family member (laughs) over somebody who is in my family. And, um, and that's hard to say because I'm family is like a big value for me. But as I have grown as a military spouse and, and kind of moved through this life, um, my blood family, they, they don't know as much about life and the way that we live. And no, certain- yeah, no, I can totally get it. And so it's, it's so a, different. Yeah. It's a totally different context. And there's just, there's things you just don't have to explain why they're hard. They just yeah. are. And yeah, no, I, I absolutely get that. So, so it's been that it's been the family who's not blood family who've become 
Mm-hmm. Family. family of choice. And, yeah, family of choice. And I have a big family of choice. And um, and so that's been the best. Yeah. No, I, I, that, that's the other one that I hear often. Um, but it's always fun. It's always fun to see what, what people's experiences have been. So if folks want to keep up with you, understand where you're going to be with the USO or be able to kind of be notified with the, when the course comes out, um, tell us how to find all that data. So I would say the best way to follow what's going on with Discovering Your Spark, um, Facebook and in the search engine, you can put Discovering Your Spark. Um, and you'll find um, the it, it, it pulled up Brittany Bacher 2017 AFI MSOI because Facebook won't let me change it. <laughs> um, but it's a, a simple discovering your spark is how you can find it. Um, and there's also discovering your spark dot com oh, website. Okay. And so you have the website where you can communicate through there. Those would probably be the best right away because the USO page is not built yet um, or live yet. And so um, my personal page, as soon as all of that becomes live, it'll start pushing out that information. Okay. So that'd be the easiest way to reach me. And I, I try to get back to people very quickly. Yes. I will. I will continue to cross my fingers that you're going to come back to JBLM because I saw you were there and we're headed there this summer. And I was like, no, she's there too soon. I want her to come after. (laughs) It's on the list to go back. I mean, um, I was with, before the COVID-19, I mean, I was slated to be there in May and then that got, you know, canceled. And so now it's just, everything's being postponed. And I said, man, when travel opens back up, it is going to be crazy because I'm going to just be all over. All over. I know there won't, be, there won't be enough of you. <laughs> so I'm excited though, because, you know, for me, I'm very fortunate that what I'm passionate about doing has become a reality Mm -hmm. and to be able to do this. And, um, and like I said, that's the thing. I don't get to do it every day. Right. It's it's three to four days a month. Um, but that's enough to like fulfill that Mm -hmm. part of me. And, and then I have responsibilities and I am a parent and, you know, I am a mill spouse and all of those other things, all the things. Um, and I like to say chief everything officer, you know, everything at home. (laughs) And, um, but then I get that moment to do the three or four days of it. And it really just kind of fills my cup oh, for I the bet. next time. I bet. I do. Yeah. So. No, yeah. well, I hope, I hope we will see you there. I'm excited. Yeah. I appreciate you hanging out with us today and walking us through what you're up to. I hope folks will, will uh, kind of tune in and take advantage of what you're offering. Cause it's really, um, it's such a wonderful conversation I think to be having no matter whether you're two years in or 18 years in, like, I don't think it matters. I think there's always room for this conversation. Yeah, it, there is. And I'll, I'll leave you with this. The workbook itself is also a great conversation starter for, for marriages. Oh. It's a great tool where you can take some of the questions out of there and, and start a conversation with your spouse. Yeah, and as you hear retirement, mm-hmm. it's a great tool to help your spouse, your service member, as they're trying to transition and really figure out like, what do I want to do next? Right. Because they're not being asked that either. Right. Service. Like it's not, what do you want to do next? It's just, Hey, we're going to get you, you know, prepared for interviews and resume. But it's like, what if you, what if you want to take a six month hiatus mm-hmm. or break? You know, what if you want to return to school? You know? So it's a great tool for that yeah. as well. No, that's, that's always, that's a really, um, I think for many people, a surprisingly hard transition, I think for many. Um, and sometimes it's partly because conversations almost start too late because it seems like having them when you should have them is too early, but it's really not. Yeah. The, I don't know that there is really a too early to start thinking through some of those I things. Think there is. Um, I, I think, you know, I'll leave, I'll leave with this little nugget here. Um, if you look at the the service member and really sit down and have the conversation on why they came into the military, mm-hmm. what was their reasoning for coming in? Cause sometimes that's not a, a purpose reason. Like, right. Oh, it was my yeah. purpose. Sometimes it was for education yeah. and I thought they were going to do four to six years and wow, I'm 18 years in right. and I'm you know, still here. So it's having that conversation with them, why they wanted to come in in the first place and did they get the job that they wanted to do or were they assigned a job when they got in, mm-hmm. because sometimes, 
you know, they might have recruited in thinking, hey, this is the job I was thinking I was going to do when I was recruited. But then when I got in, they said, oh, kidding, right. you're, you're going to go, do the yeah. job. And you've been doing it for however long. And, and when you get to that point where you leave the service, it's for the first time that service member can say, what do I really right. want what, to yeah. do? Yeah. No. What, you know, where, what's going to make me happy. So it's a great tool. It's a great resource for our military spouses. It's a great transitioning resource um, for the, the unit, for the marriage, the family unit. So I'm no. excited to see where it's going to go. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, as, as am I I'm excited to watch. So thank you. Thank, for, thank you for hanging out with us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this uh, spotlight. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Um, we will catch you on the next one. We hope you're doing well. Be sure to follow us on Facebook so you'll see as soon as these videos are posted. Have a great day.